And the recording has started, so I will hand it over to Mary and John. Great. Thank you for a wonderful introduction, Alexis. It was a little embarrassing, but anyway, <laughs> um, that is great. Um, and it's just wonderful to see everybody. Uh, it's just so exciting, uh, especially during this, I don't know, very uncertain time in our lives where uh, this is one of the few ways we can get together, but we can see each other. So it's lovely. And it's wonderful when your screens are on so we can actually see your faces as well. It's, uh, it makes it feel much more like we're in a room together. So thank you for that. Um, so tonight we're, we're going to be talking about uh, collaboration and creativity. And uh, I just want to point out one thing that this whole activity is about collaboration <laughs> because we're talking about an idea and sharing ideas. So almost there's so many things that we do that are collaborative that we don't necessarily think about. Um, I wanted to start the evening with a really simple activity. Um, and it, uh, I was looking around the house for one of these and I couldn't find one, but I knew everyone had, had used one or knows what I'm talking about. I want you to just, it's just gonna take us a minute to do. I want you to imagine you have a styrofoam cup in front of you, that lovely little white styrofoam cup that we get everywhere in every restaurant and places that we go. And imagine you have a cup in front of you. And I'd like you to list 10, just scribble them down somewhere on a piece of a napkin or whatever, 10 things that you could do with a styrofoam cup. And it could be really crazy. Maybe you're gonna glue them together, or you're gonna melt them down, or you're gonna make headphones or whatever kind of crazy idea that you can come up with. So just 10, Crazy ideas or just any idea that you could do with a styrofoam cup. What could it be used for? What, what could you do with it? So just take a moment just to kind of make a little list someplace on your, on a pad of paper or if you on your computer, wherever. Maybe just about 30 more seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a very, very, very simple activity, um, one that is used in your, you know, when you're teaching about divergent thinking, which is extremely common to both uh, creativity and collaboration. And so in thinking divergently, we have each of us come up with a list, and I'm sure there's some really great ones in there. Does anyone want to read their, read some of their, their ideas just to, just to hear any, anybody want to volunteer their list for a starting point? Uh, Anybody? Well, I had things like, uh, uh, you know, a, a telephone, like I could make a little telephone thing for a string, plant holder, party hat, um, a house for a mouse. Um, those are just some crazy things. Anyone else have a couple of ones that they had? I, yes, got, 13, I got 13 things. I had, I had drink from it, eat it, throw it, uh, use it to catch, draw on it, um, use it as a loudspeaker. Key in it, uh, write, uh, view with it, share it, pray with it or for it, protest it, uh, cry into it, and plant in it. Plant in it. I love it. That's great. So, what? Oh, and, and, and <laughs> the ideas. Anyone else want to give their give their list? Jean, what's on your list? Well, you know, great minds think alike, Mary. The first thing on my list was a house for a mouse. So we need to get together and collaborate. <laughs> I, I'd also said a piece of recycled jewelry. Uh, it would make a good bathtub stopper um, for plugging holes in my old wall, uh, insulation, a drying surface, like a, a canvas for drying on, um, to build a sculpture or a toilet when stuck in a car. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so I mean, we could go around the room and it would just be a scream, really, the, the list of things that we would find. So I just want to make a point that, um, and it's it's interesting, I, I, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with or read a lot about Keith uh, Sawyer, but he writes a lot about um, uh, about collective creativity and uh, and just ideas around that. And he talks a lot about personal creativity and collective creativity. And so personal creativity, which you just did, you know, each person came up with 10 ideas, which are great and they're wonderful. But just look at, there's 39 of us in this little Zoom session right now. If we were to look at the list of ideas that we came up with would just be phenomenal. So one thing that happens when we start thinking collectively and we collaborate with each other, um, the ideas grow. We, we, we have that many more things to think about, that many ideas to extend what we're doing. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting also in his work, he talks about that with collective creativity or collaboration, you do need some kind of a, a starting point, like a framework and he sort of sometimes calls it sort of a, a guided framework. So there has to be a problem or something if you're working collaboratively. And in this case, we took the idea of what we could do with a cup. So there has to be a starting point for that to grow. So the need for some kind of a, a focal point. Um, and uh, I thought that was really interesting too. Otherwise, it's just total chaos if you kind of just don't have any kind of guidance. So how do we guide in that? And he talks a lot about teaching this, this kind of work and so on. And he uses the word improvisation a lot, that um, when you teach, when you do um, you know, collaborative creativity, you're bringing together all kinds of different ideas and it's quite improvisational. Like you don't know exactly where that's gonna go. We didn't know how many different ideas we're gonna have tonight. <laughs> And so there's, you know, you have to kind of play off that and then sort those things out together and so on. But what allows that creative activity to kind of grow um, are a number of things. And I think John and I know that they're going to talk about this as well. I mean, as a group, there has to be a kind of um, a common understanding uh, in the sense of, of a, a level of respect for each other's opinions and to hear someone else's voice. Um, things, um, things like um, engagement. Uh, and a kind of a, a sense of creating a kind of trust amongst us so that we can share those things with each other. So, and, and as teachers, we have to create that atmosphere where collaborative creativity can actually take place. So it's that kind of like doubling or amplifying what happens on an individual basis. And he also points out something interesting. I think that he talks a lot about how our notion of creativity has been very much about the individual that you know, this person's a really creative person or you know, these are the skills of a creative individual. And he is commenting on the fact that we now need to be starting to think about the, the whole social and collective aspects of creativity, which has really come with um, the idea of open source software um, and it requires a collective way of thinking so that there's a lot of things that are happening now that are very collective and requiring a kind of collaboration amongst people and therefore kind of moving creativity from a more individualistic activity to something that is more collaborative on a global level. So we're working on bigger problems. We're bringing more people together from different walks of life and so on to share their points of view. So I just wanted to kind of start that conversation with just some of thoughts about it that I've been thinking about lately. And uh, I'm gonna now turn it over to John <laughs> who's gonna to add to that or maybe have a completely different direction of what I was talking about. Thanks, John. Thank you, Mary. Um, the first thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, Mary is someone I've collaborated with on a number of projects, and uh, she's one of the easiest people to collaborate with. Uh, I'm sure you've encountered, you know, you've, you've sometimes tried to collaborate with somebody and discover that, uh, you know, collaboration is not just not for them. Um, and that's okay. But, uh, but it's, it's interesting when you, you know, we, we use the word sometimes and, uh, you know, it's 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 not an easy thing to do um, all the all the time. Although I find that um, I, I'm not sure if I would do anything without collaborating. Um, when I, I you know when I just before this uh, session, I just pulled up my uh, the letter. The, you know, the long for academics they'll know this. The long letter we write uh, when we send you know when we send in our dossier for. Uh, a promotion to full professor. So I, I read, I just went through that letter. I didn't read it all. I just wanted to scan it. And then I did a little search to see how many times um, I could find, you know, something related to collaboration. 
So uh, the word collaborate appeared once, collaboration appeared twice, collaborative appeared nine times, and collaborator appeared twice. So that's 14 times in one letter that I've used, you know, collaborator, collaboration, or collaborative, or collaborator, you know, speaking about the person. But then there's other ways of thinking about collaborate as well, especially, you know, again, in the academic field, because we talk about writing a lot, and I am, am an author. So I, I've talked about uh, co-authoring. Uh, so I looked up co-authored, um, it appeared twice. Co-present, I was surprised I only prepared, uh, appeared once because I've co-presented many times. Um, so I may have been presented with, I should have searched that. Um, I did search written with, it appeared once, wrote with, uh, co-edited appeared seven times. And, um, oh, and co-create, I really like that one. That appeared once. So, um, you know, 27 times something, uh, and that was just a quick search, there's probably more. Uh, and I was quite deliberate when I wrote that letter that I wanted to make it clear that um, my work really wouldn't exist without other people. Um, that, that much of my life has been about working with people um, and, and even, you know, creating myself with, with people. Um, so, you know, and I, I, it's just, I think it's, uh, it's an awareness of that journey that we're on together as human beings. Um, you know, it, I just think it's um, to be aware that we are, you know, that we can collaborate, that we, uh, you know, my, my first career was going to be, you know, well, well my, my first career was uh, intended to be an, a Roman Catholic priest. So I use the word calling a lot. Um, it only lasted a year. Well, actually it lasted a few years probably. Uh, before, you know, I lost that calling, but I use the word calling a lot, and I think we're called actually to collaborate. Um, I just feel sometimes that there's just some people that I just feel that there's such a connection with them that I'm meant to work with them. Um, you know, Mary Blatherwick is one of those people. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's just so easy to work with her, and then she get you know, and also, you know, collaborators tend to reach out. Um, they don't have any trust just looking for someone to work with. Um, and, uh, and again, Mary is that type of person. Uh, I don't know if you use this word in other parts of Canada, but here in Newfoundland, we, we use the word stingy. Um, it's the opposite of generous. I think in order to collaborate, you have to be a generous person, or you have to be able to show generosity, even if that's you know, challenging for you. Uh, it's not possible to collaborate without generosity. And so if you're inclined to be stingy, you know, with your ideas or with your, <laughs> with your thoughts or with your work, uh, collaboration is going to be a difficult journey for you. Uh, so I just, you know, practicing generosity might be a way to work your way into collaboration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And Mary, uh, just to make clear to everybody, Mary invited me. You know, she was originally the only speaker this evening. And then once again, she reached out and invited me. And Mary, thank you for doing this because uh, <laughs> collaboration has been a big part of my life. And I'm just glad to be able to talk. Well, thank you. And, it, and it's great fun collaborating with you as well. And we've had, I know we've had some really excellent times uh, thinking about things from our different perspective as well with your poetry and your writing and and with my art and so on so it's always looking for partnerships and, and forming those things and I was just thinking about the characteristics between that you know that they have in common like creativity I think that you know open you know openness and flexibility and sharing and engagement and and being able to kind of flow with things is very typical those characteristics are very typical of a collaboration as well to collaborate you need to be open you need to be flexible, we need to be able to share, we need to be able to engage with each other and to flow with ideas. So I think that both things have a lot in common, whether they're in an individual sense or in a collaborative sense. So at this point, we'd love to just open this up for people's discussions, reactions, uh, things that have happened to you, ideas that you have about collaboration. And certainly in the arts, we know that several of the art forms, like performing arts and music, have a lot to do with collaboration. And uh, you know, with working with a team of people, and that's an experience in itself of, of having to be incredibly connected and and work uh, through a common idea. 
um, uh, together. So anyway, I just uh, if if I'd just like to invite people now to to comment and uh, ask questions and whatever you whatever you whatever comes to mind. <clears throat> uh, I Mike? see Michael Michael with his hand up out of the gate. Uh, thanks very much, Alexis and uh, Mary and John. Thank you for that uh, wonderfully warm and open introduction to a fascinating topic. Uh, Mary, you mentioned Keith Sawyer. Uh, he's a jazz musician. Yes, uh, he is. You have, to, you have to watch out for those jazz musicians. They know something. They do. Uh, and, and sometimes I think that uh, what we're talking about here is, in fact, the challenge uh, of a group of jazz musicians trying to get together and, and, and play as a group uh, and paying very close attention to what each of them is playing and demonstrating. Uh, because the issue of collaboration and uh, the issue of listening very closely and being in the moment, not only with what you're doing, but with what everybody else is doing, seems to me to be at the heart of this conversation. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are, who are jazz aficionados or players, yes. uh, you seem to have the inside track and in understanding what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And of course, those of you who've ever taught a drama class or a dance class, you know exactly what we're talking about particularly when you're involved in collective improvisation. Um, that's, this is the secret of all of that kind of work, a kind of gestalt where the whole is always greater than the mere sum of its parts. Mm, thank you. Great comments, Michael. Mm. Yes, I see Kathy. <laughs> oh, just a second, Kathy. Um, just going to get you to unmute. That's all right. Thanks for the introduction, Mary and John. And uh, Michael, thanks for mentioning improvisation, because that's where I went from uh, working in performance and working with writers, dancers, sound poets, musicians, choreographers in an improvisational way and um, doing that live in front of an audience and then videotaping those and, and then getting those videotapes aired. Um, it's just um, it's almost like when you're working, like when you're working with dancers, if musicians are playing off the dancers' body movements and reading them as a musical score, or the dancers are reacting to those musicians, and it's changing the way in which that that they would be be moving, for example. So you're co-creating, and you're expanding your horizons to others. And it's almost like you're out in space somewhere, you know, and you're meeting on a on a very different plane. It's not a a physical here and now plane. So you're co-creating with others. Um, and it's very interesting because you just learn so much because it pushes you, it pushes you out into uh, another place um, because everybody comes to it. Like you don't have to know all that, all that there is to know in any one art before you work co-creatively. Of course, we all know that um, with others, but I learned so much um, from working with dancers and musicians and sound poets and um, just all these creative videographers and all these creative people um, that I couldn't have possibly learned that much if I just stayed in my own uh, way of working. Um, and everybody works differently. And that was just a, a, a time in my life when that was a good thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we all work differently at different times. Sometimes you need, you know, personal, personal time to just focus and do that art if you're an artist. Um, but um, it's just very different, different working um, um, improvisationally, um, as opposed to if you have a, a, a choreographed piece or a written piece and everybody is contributing in their own in their own way so um it's just very different ways of working so i just wanted to throw that out, out there yeah. thank you kathy that's great um we've got fred and then we've got paul i was just going to bring in another aspect of it because that's one of the advantages of having like the 39 of us here we all have different eyes and if we think of our own body structure we need two eyes for our binocular vision we need three signals to triangulate the location of something. We need um, multiple perspectives and viewpoints and experiences. And having a, a collection of people doesn't work. It's got to be a collective where we all 
bring those different very backgrounds and and vision to a certain problem so i often use collaboration in problem solving not necessarily in a music production or a creative production i'm thinking of solving problems and sometimes just the fact that one person is sitting upside or like on the other side of the table from the problem gives them a perspective into the problem that we didn't have until someone did that yeah. and just made us all of a sudden look in different ways exactly yeah yeah really good really good uh uh, aspect of that thread that different perspectives that idea of gaining that sort of different ideas from different people so important thank you paul well launching off of fred with fred saying it's um what i'll do with my i'm doing with my my students on monday i'm doing the well, i actually have asked them to do it to come into class with it to do their their personality colors and when we're going to step into collaborative art i want them to I want the groups to be formed off of diverse colors, as diverse as possible. No one of the same color, if we can help it. Um, to bring in that, that, that to see the power of the different points of view and to come in informed about how to deal with people of different colors and personality types. Um, like, so the orange and the blue can get along just fine because they see the need for each other to bring those diverse personalities to the table. Because that's how those creative enterprises really bear fruit. And then they'll know what the, each other's dominant capacity is. Another key aspect that I was bringing up that Robert Kelly, uh, that, I, that I focus on that Robert Kelly brings forward is, is that it, don't do a collaboration unless if it's a lot, there's something lofty in it. Like we often get tripped up in confusing cooperation with collaboration. And I know public education, whenever we call it, most often we say group work or collaboration, what we're talking about is just getting along. Just do your part. Everybody does a piece of something and then it all should come together. But that still preserves the ego's role and somebody dominating something um, and feel, feeling the need to take over to get it done. When it's truly a lofty enterprise, you have to su suspend the ego and, and to take on that, that, um, that the group focus towards the thing, the, the task at hand, the challenge, is far more important than the individual. And when then they see that sense of loss and they, the students will, or the participants will suspend themselves and just dive in and bring everything they can to it together. And, and I see whenever you bring that as a focus, we're doing this because there's a greater purpose. Yeah. Um, there's massive buy-in. And whereas group work is a major turnoff for kids. That's it. Yeah, great, great comments. Thanks, thanks Paul, those are excellent. Really good views. Someone else? Yeah, Jean. Hi there. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, John. Um, I'm very grateful to be here this evening. It's just wonderful to listen to this really enriching conversation. I've missed it. Um, it had me thinking as you were talking about, I guess, my own practice and I'd often say, actually, I love collaboration. And there, there's a bit of truth in that, in that it works 50% of the time. <laughs> but I have found that when it doesn't, and there have been many failures, I have probably learned even more. The failures of collaboration have been very enriching. But I came to that process reluctantly because I always felt shy in the beginning and felt that it wasn't a space that I could belong to. And as I kind of tried it out and got more comfortable, um, at, at one point I, I read a reading and it was by um, Sedakidus and he's, uh, he studies psychology and he is fascinated with the ordering of the individual self. And so many of his writings were saying that how within each of us, we hold the individual self, the relational self and the communal self. And while it's just one model and it's not the way, the truth and the light, it kind of helped me to see that actually the, the relational aspect of myself, my practice and the communal aspect of myself, my practice was not something other that I had to try on. It was something that kind of was, was there that I could tap into. And, uh, and so now it's kind of become a pillar of my practice. And so um, 
well it's just something small it's really just about about i guess it had me re reflecting on that and how um it's kind of nice to try it it's it's really good to kind of reach out and to do projects with other people and to kind of reflect on them afterwards and the more i do i find the easier it gets mm -hmm. and uh one small point is that um in working with kids in schools, I found that some of the most amazing collaborators were uh, some of the, the children and teacher who, who, teachers who also felt very unsure of themselves. And they would never step out to say, hey, I'm creative, but they would look to me as an artist or as a teacher, as somebody in authority who was creative. And so if I reached up needing something, they would notice because they were so attentive and they would reach for the scissors and put it into my hand mm -hmm. or they would see me struggling needing the paint at a moment when I was up a ladder and the next thing was right by my side and and I came to realize the absolute value of that like it was just mm -hmm. amazing to work with people like that mm -hmm. you know who, who who in the beginning they felt uh, that they had nothing to bring and I was like you know you're hired like i want i'll go to hell with you and back again so anyway there's just some thoughts i had yeah. thanks folks great jean wonderful thoughts Thanks, I love, the idea of, I love the idea of the failure you know that there that that it doesn't always work and what are the, what are the components that actually help these things come about so really interesting um i'm going to pass it over to john Jean, thank you for that. Uh, I just wanted to mention that, you know, I was considering uh, when I was writing my letter uh, a few years ago for a promotion, I think it was in, I forget what year it was, uh, I was going to uh, just write about my failures, actually. Um, but I didn't think that would go over very well. I, I, <laughs> I didn't think it would come across. <laughs> If you had been on, the, if you had been on, the, if you had been on the uh, university review committee, I would have been fine with that. But uh, but yeah, I I think we you know um, we have a place here in Newfoundland called Mistaken Point, um, and it's a it's an it's, it's a university student actually discovered these fossils that uh, are millions of years old, some of the oldest fossils in the world. Um, and it was the beginning, you know, the first attempt at life, well, not, well, one, not the first necessarily, but one of the first attempts at life, um, you know, on this planet. Uh, it didn't continue. We, you know, the, it, it died off and we, we, you know, another trial started. We evolved, we evolved from something else. We didn't evolve from these, you know, these uh, um, sea life creatures that, you know, or plant life, but they were, they were, they were you know, a living creatures. Um, but so I, what I take from that is that, you know, God made a mistake. Uh, and <laughs> because the first attempt didn't work out, uh, you know, if you want to believe in God, you know, so the first attempt, it didn't work out. So if God can make a mistake, and keep going on and trying, then I can certainly make a mistake. So I was really excited about all my mistakes that I've made after after this after seeing and spending some time on mistaken point. Um, yeah, I was I was really excited that uh, I can make lots of mistakes and just keep plowing on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, <laughs> amazing name for a spot, a place. <laughs> Great, thank you, John. Is anyone working in a collaborative environment at the moment? I'm curious just to know where where people are at in terms of different partnerships or different, uh, it, and it might not even be in work. It might it might be in life in terms of just those uh, opportunities where you might be working within a group of people. Um, curious to see where what anyone might be doing right now and what their experience is in the middle of something. Because I think oftentimes we are in a state of reflection um, where we gain that kind of insight into what our experience was that moves us forward. But I'm curious to know if someone's in the middle of something right now um, at all. It's been very challenging, I think, in this time, obviously, because we've been in our, our isolated uh, bubbles. But, um, but yet this sort of online world has started to open some of those doors. Is anyone working in a, in a collaborative or a co-creative or a, a cohort of, of study or, or work right now? 
I got Blaine. I'm in the midst of, uh, can you, okay. Alexia, you can hear me? All right. I'm in the midst of uh, putting together a text that will be published uh, this year, year by Friesen Press entitled Crushing Ice, Short on Theoretical, Long on Practical Approaches to uh, Imagination, Creativity, Education. That project would not be <laughs> possible at all. It features uh, at present 17 different writers, well, actually more than 20 writers, but 17 different chapters at and Canada from uh, Newfoundland to British Columbia and points in between. And it would not have been possible without the contribution, the support, and the encouragement of many who are on this uh, jam session this evening. So uh, I'm in the midst of it. I'm at the tail end of editing chapters and pulling them together and sending them off to the publisher, hopefully by the end of this month and with a publication expecting some time in August or September of this year. Yeah, thanks. Wow. Thanks, Blaine, that's great. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to, if, if someone hasn't mentioned, I just wanted to mention that um, um, in, in reading about and knowing about indigenous cultures and thinking about sort of, you know, my own culture and in, in terms of being, I, I think, well, I'm, you know, originally from England, but, uh, you know, living in Canada and so on. And just looking at ways that that cultural groups and different groups actually relate to each other. And I've always found that the students that I've worked with who were Indigenous were amazing in the way that they work together and they would help each other. And they they see a kind of like, you know, they, they're so uh, almost a holistic view of things. So um, I, I think it's a really interesting looking at the, at the students we work with and the people we have around us and maybe where they, even, even in terms of their own um, communities, how they look at collaboration and how that may be part of who they are and how they think about the world. So I don't know if I know there's some people here who could comment on that and who might be able to, to um, expand on that or maybe talk about that a little bit. Just before that, I know Shelly had your hand up as well. Um, or do you want to comment on, and then after uh, Oakley? Yeah, um, I, I had the pleasure of attending a makeathon with the uh, um, Capital National Puppet Guild uh, this past weekend. And it was so fulfilling and enriching. And everybody had, the theme was wings. So there was a focal point and um, there was one room that was DJed and the gal put all together like things that were based on what people were making and and wings and all kinds of stuff. And then there were all these breakout rooms of, of the opportunity to chat and collaborate and brainstorm. And it was just so interesting how people shared mechanisms and ideas. And um, like right now I'm using a weed whacker to rivet together teeny tiny tendons so that when I, um, I'm making a, a puppet called a flight of fancy and I've got all my wings and when it opens, I want my wings, my feathers to move together. And that came from a presentation by Laura Matthews. And it was just so powerful to have this sort of cascade of ideas and people would have problems and other people would have so many different ideas. It was just delightful. Um, and personally, I run a, a, well, run, I organize a puppet meetup every two weeks. And um, we work on improv and we work on building and sharing ideas. And uh, that definitely has been a bright spot through all of the like grind of COVID. <laughs> That's fantastic, Shelly. Wow. <laughs> I love Thanks, it. Thanks, Shelly. That's fabulous. I love that you're building a puppet as we're discussing all of this. It feels so collaborative <laughs> in that. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, Oakley, thoughts? Hi, um, just bouncing off of what Mary said about Indigenous people like collaborating. Yes. Um, I'm working on the reproduction of the 180 year old O'Halloran coat. And um, oh, wow. I was able to <laughs> collaborate with two other Mi'kmaq designers who were able to bring kind of like their own Indigenous background. So we're all Mi'kmaq, but we all come from different backgrounds. And um, it was really cool because, here, I'll pull up the coat right now. I have it with me. This is just a skirt, but each and every single one of these panels 
was created by all three of us. Wow. And um, Fantastic. <laughs> so basically, we, we kind of had to look at the original and go through and pick together, like, what we could, like, kind of, like, or what was familiar to us. So a lot of, like, the hand stitching and, like, the beadwork and different bead styles, it was cool to just see, like, all of us kind of, like, look at it and be like, I've learned this from my grandmother. And mm -hmm. so we're taking kind of, like, generational techniques and applying them into one piece and just kind of like harmonizing it so it becomes kind of like the reproduction of this 180 year old coat but yeah, oh, did yeah. That again? and I'm also working on it as I'm listening <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. thank you <laughs> wonderful no wonderful can you hold it up again please I, and is it okay if I take a photo wow look at that isn't that great okay, really fantastic Thank you. That is so great. That is magnificent. I love that um, harmonizing of generational knowledge. Mm -hmm. That is such a, a way of, again, bringing together these ideas that are not just of the people who are in the present, but also of our ancestors from the past. So mm -hmm. there's something about that knowledge that as we come together as collaborators, we come with our histories. We come with our, our, our generational wisdom, we come with the wisdom that has, that has come before us in, in that coming together. It's a, an, a beautiful, I love that harmonizing of, of generational knowledge. That was gorgeous. Uh, Trevor Strong, and then I got John up on the deck next. Unmute. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so much with creativity and collaboration. Um, there's so many different types. I'll just quickly go through. I mean, I just, sorry, too many things in my head. So one of the things, I'm, uh, what was just presented, I was thinking also in folk music, you know, um, this collaboration with the past and songs changing and developing and how the concept of ownership has really stopped a lot of that from happening because now you can't hear a song and just change it. Somebody owns that song and music doesn't, flow like it used to like mm -hmm. you can't just you know eat, uh, and other new forms grew from that right you know hip-hop and samples and people just sample stuff and put it together and the, before it was making money it was fine and then people were like no that's that's my sample you took my sample so uh you can't use that unless you give us money um okay that was just one quick point but the, but but i think that collaborating with the past is harder with the sense of ownership over ideas and that someone owns a creation uh, and the other thing, um, there's different types of collaboration, right? So my, my favorite collaboration is just going and playing a song and jamming with whoever is there, whether they stomp, tap their foot or whether they play an instrument, it doesn't matter. And that's just a wonderful thing of collaborating towards one thing. You don't have to know who does what. I mean, music is great for that. It's very different from being per, trying to collaborate in a professional manner. I'm in a group that has been going on for 32 years now. And that is a very different vibe than going to meeting a bunch of people who you don't know and making a thing together. So, um, yeah, and we've, you know, we've been performing for that long. In the last two years, we haven't been able to tour, so we've had to find ways to do stuff creatively online. Um, and yeah, there's one, I'll just do a quick anecdote. When we started off touring years ago, we'd meet all other uh, music acts touring around. And we knew which ones were not going to last. Were the ones that always hugged each other before and after every show, we knew they weren't lasting because they like somebody already made that point that for that kind of collaboration, it's not necessarily about all loving each other, it's getting the job done. And but they were all they made it both that we can only work together if we love each other. And you know, <laughs> that's that's not how our group ever worked. Like, you know, we got to the airport, we didn't see each other till they till we were on the airplane because we you know, toured together. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, you don't hang out with your family all the time when you're not in the house, because that's how it gets. Um, okay, that's too many points, but uh, it's just such a vast subject, so big. <laughs> that is fantastic. Those are some great, great, great points. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, okay, John, yes. Thank you. Uh, and Oakley, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned the word harmonize. Uh, and, you know, Alexis, you picked it up, and, and Trevor, you as well. Um, and because I, you know, and again, I, I don't think it's just the music, although I don't want to take away anything from music, but uh, harmony just, uh, or flow, uh, I guess, happens in other places as well. And uh, 
uh, because sometimes I think when, or I've noticed sometimes when the word collaboration is used, again, uh, sometimes when people are being stingy um, and they think they're collaborating, it's just a lot of noise. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard on the ears, actually. <laughs> it's hard on the system. Uh, but when, you know, when collaboration is happening, um, it, um, it just feels great and it sounds great and it looks great. Um, and, and everyone uh, feels good about it, whether they're hugging or not, uh, really doesn't matter, but they, they have that really good feeling of that they've, they've done something important. Or as Paul said, they've done something lofty. Um, because I think a lot of the things we do, we don't realize actually that some of the very ordinary things that we do are, are very lofty. Yes, great point. <clears throat> Yes, Gorin. Hi, everyone. I just love this conversation. And I, I agree. There is so much to be said, you know, about, about collaborating. And, and I think one thing that we're, that we're hearing quite a lot is that, man, well, many of you are musicians or are working with music. And um, Michael mentioned this initially. And I really do feel that here's my collaborator, my cat. He's a very, very sweet guy. <laughs> he wants to be in the shot. <laughs> so he'll be expressing the opinions with us. Um, yeah, and I, I really um, I really do think there is something around this, that this metaphor of harmonizing you just said, um, the metaphor of music um, is really interesting. You know, there, there is something to this and there are other potential words and metaphors that come to mind. You know, one of them might be this, this sort of idea of the emergence and sort of uh, just like when a, a group of people that are, that are happy uh, sort of working together or playing together, um, they might start sort of jamming, uh, just like we are here in this sort of idea jam. And it, it's an interesting emergent state, you know, when a group of people feels that there is um, an environment, you know, to, um, to, to actually be able to, to experience a certain kind of freedom, a kind of an improvisational safety, if you will. Um, and it, it, there's something around this that, that seems to be quite important for collaboration, that um, there's a certain kind of inclusiveness um, that we could, you know, term in different ways. We could talk about it in terms of, you know, trust building, or we could, we could go deeper and, you know, we could, we could talk about it in terms of, you know, establishing psychological safety. This is kind of a term that's been popularized in the, in the last few years. Um, but it seems to be something that I think all of you that, that are musicians and, and sort of going back to Michael's comment, they're sort of talking about this, this sort of feeling that, you know, even if you may be not agreeing on everything, there is a sense that every voice matters and, and you know, that, um, that every input will actually be valuable. Um, and somehow this it kind of generates an energy of its own. And this is why I appreciate this invitation of thinking about the you know, first cultures and Aboriginal cultures, because this seems to be kind of more built into the, the almost the DNA of these cultures. And we seem to be kind of discovering this and uncovering this right now that mm -hmm. there is something to this. And just to add um, uh, to that from the standpoint of design, you know, it, it, there has been a lot of conversation about design for complexity and sort of trying to think about how do we collaborate in complexity. And uh, one of these topics has been sort of the non, anthropocentric design, you know, how do we design to actually include other living beings into, into the conversation? How do we collaborate with, with, you know, more than just ourselves? And again, this, I think, to your wonderful invitation, Mary, seems to be really connected to, to the indigenous worldviews. In a way, we seem to be kind of relearning <laughs> that we have known all along. So these notions of, of kind of every voice matters and, and trust and safety and kind of trying to expand beyond our own perspectives um, are, are gaining in importance. And I think, I think there is something um, very relevant there. Thank you, wonderful comments. Thank, Thank you, Gorin. Uh, we got Ottawa, Lou. Hello, can you hear me all right? I'm trying to be brave a bit. Um, thank you all and, and very interesting to be part of this. I'm finding as I'm uh, growing and maturing that a lot of my life has been spent in collaboration one way or another and um, at this point in time right now I work with a lot of architects and designers and building the buildings of the future 
and I represent the flooring manufacturer. So it's always interesting to see the future coming in reality slowly but surely and, and sharing of ideas. And through that, I can also say that uh, mentorship is happening as in trusting and um, allowing others to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And then the same kind of happens. I play, I'm uh, also a bit of a musician. So the same thing I'm finding now as I'm progressing that I prefer to play with people than to play by myself. Mm, interesting. You know, <laughs> I, I am always reaching for somebody else to come at my house and to play with me. And it, I, I don't want the limelight. I actually want them to shine, yeah, yeah. which allows me to take a back seat and enjoy them, right? Anyways, I just thought I'd want to share that. Thank you. Yeah, great, great comments. Excellent. Thank you, Lou. Um, so funnily enough, uh, we are coming into our last five minutes of this idea jam. Uh, any last thoughts or any responses to anything that has come forward this evening that anyone wants to, to build on? Um, I love that there's so much going on in, in, in our, in working. It's, it feels like there's a, not only is it sort of hiving away in the mind, but it feels like it's sort of coming out in different outlets. Uh, in our writing and creativity and in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, anyone have any last thoughts before we? Um, I, I uh, just about, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I, was just, I was just going to say that I think um, it's human to collaborate. I mean, in, in the sense that, um, you know, we ha by working together, we make things. By working together, we create things. I mean, there's a certain amount we do on our own, but maybe we collaborate a lot more than we think we do. You know, I mean, there is a kind of deliberate collaboration, but maybe on a daily basis, we're collaborating more than we think we are. And I think what's interesting to think about are what, what makes it work? Like, you know, Jean, you were saying like sometimes it doesn't work, but what makes it work? And, and I think that notion tonight of harmonizing, of, of respecting someone else's viewpoint, um, you know, and that whole thing of creating a space where it's, where you can explore different viewpoints and accept diversity. So many of these things are really important for us to move forward. And I, and I agree that I think the Indigenous people have have you know have known this and embody these things in, in their own lives and so on so there is a lot of learning to take place and we're at a really interesting point um maybe in our in our history um and looking at things differently and and thinking about collaboration as something that's um something that we work towards but also that we really are doing on a daily basis maybe in small ways and doesn't have to be necessarily deliberate maybe it's happening so I just want to comment on that. I don't know if anyone has any thought on that. And John, yeah, we've got gonna... to, uh, Isabel has a, a hand up. I, um, yeah, I do agree that um, with a lot of what you guys said um, in terms of listening and creating a space and, you know, all that stuff. I think too that um, interdependence is part of it, uh, especially mm -hmm. like I, I uh, live with a disability. So there's a lot of things that I need to collaborate on naturally to get things done. Um, and I think this would be very useful in the art world as well. Like if I have an idea and I don't have the necessary skill sets to implement it, um, it would be good to collaborate with other people who have those skill sets. Um, yeah. Not that I'm directing them like, okay, make my idea, chop, chop. It's more yeah. like, hey, you know, what do you think of this? Like, would this work? Like, what do you think? And then they kind of go full force at with it. You know what I mean? And then it becomes something bigger than just us. Yeah. Really good. Really good point. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. I think, uh, John, you were going to, is it Lexus, you know, who's come? Is yeah, John? John, I think you, you wanted to have a little last say or an idea. Just to, uh, just, I just want to say, Lou, I, I think has highlighted uh, two other aspects, I think, that we, you know, of collaboration. And one is humility, uh, and the other is grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, so we are just coming up. We do like to keep this tight on our time because we like to think that we're, um, want everybody's wanting to come back for more <laughs> because it's a nice feeling when it feels like it just went by so 
quickly. Um, <laughs> but it was interesting uh, that Fred, I think you said the beginning, beginning and Mary was just saying uh, now sort of in a similar way is that it just really doesn't exist without each other. So this is a, the work doesn't exist without other people. It is about that interaction. It is about that interface. And I know for myself, um, I'm doing my master's in interdisciplinary studies right now. Is is what what does that interdisciplinary mean? And what where it does it? And how does it exist in in our lives? Because it feels like it's just living, and that it's constantly in collaboration with our environment, with our with other people, even mm. with ourselves mm. at different times of day. And I feel like I'm constantly working in collaboration with where my feet want to make me fall and, and where I want to actually go when I head down the stairs. Um, so uh, this, we will have this up. Uh, so this will be posted on YouTube, this, uh, this chat this evening, this idea jam. We will also send out the, um, the, all of the chat. We saved the chat. We sent it out as a file. It's all located on our scenic uh, website, which is all one word. The Canadian Canadian Network for Imagination and Creativity dot com is all one word, and that's our website. You can just Google it, and it will come up. But um, all of our previous idea jams are there. All the chats are there. And like I said, we are coming up. Um, we're going to send a bigger announcement out, but we will be having a conference. I'm not going to release the dates yet because we're going to put out um, a, a proper sort of call, a, a, just a, a proper sort of press release announcement. But uh, hold uh, hold open uh, some part of the third week of April <laughs> around the same time of an idea jam. So um, we'll be uh, heading towards that with more information and more details to come, but just looking to take this and just expand it, make it a little bit more of a saturation, really kind of get ourselves all filled up before we um, depart for the summer. So I really want to thank Mary and I really want to thank John uh, for prompting this idea jam this evening to all of you for your not just your contributions, but also your listening and your receiving of all of these ideas. It's been very exciting uh, to head back into this uh, jam world for 2022. We will see you uh, in February. Let me just call up my calendar. Uh, I usually have this ready and open. Um, let me just see. We are coming up in February with... February 17th, Pierre Gamwell, people who make the extraordinary happen and how we do too. All right, so that's our next idea jam. All right, everyone, have a good evening. Stopping record, all the best.